Hello and welcome back to the second part of this video and before we were rudely interrupted we were about to look at how to create the difference in elevation of the, the hexagons in this effect and we'll go over two ways to do this each with their own advantages and disadvantages so let's just dive right in. The first method we're going to look at is using weights and I really really like this method because just this concept alone that you can use a uh, weight paint to tell a modifier how to affect the model is such a powerful concept and we'll be looking at this in a future video. Uh, I think you guys are really going to like that one. It's such a powerful concept and it lets you maintain that control because all that uh, variation is happening within this one model that we have. And, but the downside is that I found that it, this method really impacts the performance. But the second method we're going to look at will be a sort of workaround around that problem. Um, if your machine won't be able to handle this, um, I found that it, you lose a bit of that control, but the performance is something that uh, wasn't very punishing, at least on my end. So the first thing we'll need to do is apply all the mirror modifiers because we want to have access to uh, the various individual hexagons in the whole mesh. But right now they're being generated by the mirror modifier, by the, sorry, by the array modifiers. So we can't really, if you go into edit mode, you'll see that you, you only have access to this first one. So we'll need to apply the array modifiers. And then if you go back into edit mode, you'll see that you can you can now access all the um all the different individual hexagons we'll keep the bevel modifier because uh, it just helps to catch the light at the edges and if you turn it on and off you'll see the difference and i think that just goes a long way in improving the quality of the render after applying the array modifiers you'll notice the performance in the viewport takes a bit of a hit and that's because the grid is no longer being generated by the modifiers, but it's now made up of individual uh, polygons, and which increases the poly count of your whole scene. But if you just, uh, you can manage that by reducing the size of the grid if the performance hit is too much. I'll then go to the weight paint mode, and then under the wave modifier, I'll set the maximum height. That's the height of the hexagons with the highest displacement and then inside the object data properties i'm going to create a new vertex group in this vertex group we're going to have three different weights i'll select in edit mode all the hexagons and set a value of 0 0.6 which means that they'll be displaced at about 60 percent of the maximum height that we set I'll then randomly select hexagons all over the place and assign them a value of 1 and these will be the hexagons that will be influenced the most by the wave modifier. I'll do the same again and randomly select more hexagons and assign them a value of 0 and these will be the hexagons that will be influenced the least by the modifier. You can then select that vertex group uh, in the wave modifier and you'll see how the whole thing comes together. As I mentioned, I really like this approach because it enables us to create all that variation within the same mesh, but it really impacted the performance. So now we'll just approach it a little bit differently and see how we can avoid that issue. So just like before, we'll need to apply the array modifiers, and then I'll select everything inside edit mode and hit Control p and then separate by loose parts that will just separate all the different hexagons into their own separate objects. I'll then in object mode randomly select different uh, hexagons and then I'll move them into their own collection just to stay a bit organized in case I need to make changes uh, in, in the future. I'll move them into their own separate uh, collection and then with the last hexagon selected, I'll go to the wave modifier and increase the height for that uh, particular hexagon 
and then hit Control L and then link the modifiers. That will just apply that change to all the other selected hexagons. Again, I'll randomly select uh, other hexagons and move them into their own separate collection. And then with the last one selected, I'll go to the wave modifier and reduce uh, the height. And then again, hit Control L and link that link the modifiers so that that change can be applied to all the other uh, selected hexagons in that collection. And I find that uh, this approach uh, doesn't impact the performance as much. But as you can see, because we have um, the hexagon separated into separate objects, if you wanted to make a change in future, there are just extra steps in there that you have to go through. So that's it for this video. If you like the video, do drop a like. And if you like the content on this channel and you want to see some more, uh, do subscribe and hit the notification button so you can be notified when I drop more content. And uh, yeah, that's it. And stay safe, wash your hands, and see you in the next one. Oh.